All right, kids. Well, I'm candle making. And I gotta admit, pretty easy. Pretty easy. I, you know, I, I, I wrapped it up in my head that this was gonna be like a big ordeal. It's not. It's a lot of hanging out, sitting around, waiting for stuff to happen. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, this is the wax melting. I've gotta get the wax to 175 degrees. All right, this is the next step. I gotta put the wax into this cup here and let it cool down to 165 degrees. Why? Because my fragrance oil has a flash point of 175. That means it ignites and goes into fire. So I gotta cool this down to about 145 or so to be safe. Then I'll add the oil into that and then pour it into the two cups. And there you go. I have two eight ounce cups and two ounces of melted wax that I'm now waiting to cool. So you see it's just a it's just a lot of just a lot of waiting. It's just a lot of standing around waiting. Now with time, if I develop this into a full bone business, I will buy a pot that I simply plug into the wall and it'll maintain a large amount of wax like you know 150 pounds or so of wax or 100 pounds or 50 pounds whatever a big amount it'll just keep that at a certain temperature then all I need to do is pour off add my scent and and go and it should be a little bit faster production wise that way but for learning this works out just absolutely perfect okay so I got one down that's patchouli cooling off right there got the next one melting that's got to get to 170. So we're not there yet. Getting there. All right, so this is what my setup looks like. <clears throat> I take it out of the aluminum pitcher. I put it into the two cup, measuring cup. I then put two jars here. I add my scent. Next one's going to be incense and myrrh and this time I'm going to add some colorant because I think frankincense I'm sorry frankincense and myrrh I think frankincense and myrrh should be brown I don't know why maybe it should be purple or pink or something I have no idea yeah so I don't really know what color what color frankincense and myrrh is I'm assuming it's brown I did buy a whole bunch of different colors um, they had a little color kit you could buy that had a whole bunch of them. I don't think frankincense and myrrh is orange. I, I don't think it's blue. I don't think it's red, although maybe. I don't think it's yellow. I don't think it's black. And what else do I got? And green. And I don't think it's green. So. I have all of those colors and I got to figure out you know what to do with them and I also don't know how many how much dye does it take so I'm experimenting this is called learning this is what we're doing we're just learning so I'm going to experiment so this is my little my little box of scents and colorants and I've got some other stuff this is not only my stuff for uh, candle making but also for soap making like I use these larger bottles this one is cucumber melon my daughter-in-law's favorite uh, it smells so nice and fresh I'd make great soap just fantastic soap but that and then in that cucumber and melon I use some of this mica green colorant when I make soap and I'll be making soap here in, a, in tomorrow or the next day and then on the bottom of each one of my jars I put one of these uh, one of these caution, I doubt you can see that, caution warning labels. You'll never be able to read it. Hell, I can't read it, and I got my glasses off right in front of me here, but, you know, lawyers, you got to have some caution labels because, you know, there are some people that are, <laughs> that aren't smart enough to realize that you shouldn't burn on open flame somewhere near something flammable, you know? Like the last thing you want to do near an open flame is throw some alcohol on it. Or, uh, 
you know, gasoline. Or <laughs> Some people just aren't too smart. So you, on every candle, I have to have a little warning label telling people what's going on. So anyhow, in the meantime, this is, requires a lot of sitting and waiting. I'm waiting for my wax to heat up. It's not there yet. It's about 145. It's got about 30 degrees more to go. And it's still got a, a lump of wax in the middle. It's got to finish melting all that down before I can go. So, so guys, it's winter time. And if you're looking for something to do, let me. Guys, it's winter time. And if you're looking for something to do in the house that is fun and you can make a little money with it, start making candles. I mean, it's warm and it's hot and it's dry. I mean, it's cold and it's dry in the winter time, right? It usually dries out. You get the heat going. It dries out the air. So I got a pot of boiling water on the stove. So I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm putting moisture back into the apartment. It makes me feel more comfortable being inside, and that's generating heat just the same as the furnace. Now, I'm really looking forward to getting my own place because when I have my own place, I'm going to heat with wood. And talk about a perfect scenario, putting a pot of water on the wood stove to heat it up to make candles. You're adding moisture and you're heating your house all at the same time. This is called multitasking. Anyhow, so I got two more jars here. I got to get ready. One, two, for frankincense and myrrh. Uh oh, she's barking. There's nobody at the door I can see from here, but. She barks at everything. Look at her. What are you barking at? What are you barking at? You gonna get him? Go get him. Go get him. Go get him. Now I know why all these YouTubers always bend over when they're doing stuff. Trying to show you what I'm doing here, and the only way I can do that is to bend over. So, all right. So I've got my wax here. I've got two cups. I have it melted. I am down to 139. I need to be between 125 and 145. So I'm at the right stop. Now I'm going to add my wild mountain honey scent. I'm going to pour that in here right on the side, so it don't make a lot of bubbles. There's that. Well, that smells good. Now, I think wild mountain honey should have a yellowish golden hue to it. And it does while it's melted, but it's not going to keep that for long. Now, what I found out in using the brown on the frankincense and myrrh is these bottles don't drip out. They pour. If I remember correctly, they did give me some drip spouts for them. But I'm just going to do... A little, a little, little, weedle, little, weedle, little bit. I got some on my finger. Clean up the side of the container so I don't have a mess. There we go. Now I took a spoon, one of my spoons, and I mixed that so that my color, oh that's a nice honey color, orangey kind of color, very nice, is looking like honey. That really does look like honey. I mean, I actually have some honey here, and this looks like honey. Very, very pretty. I like that. All right, so now I'm going to pour this into my cups. Move that so I don't get it on there. Look at that pretty color. Wowzers. There's one. There's the other. I got a little too much in the jar. Alright, so now the first thing I need to do is I need to wipe out my measuring cup because I need to get the wax and the colorant out of there so I can do the next one without it being, uh, you know, messed up by that one in there. So. Get that all wiped out, good and clean. Well, not good and clean, but clean enough for this. Now I'm going to set these down so I got those wicks standing up nice and tall. I'm going to put the scent color right there so I know which scent this is. 
double check that double check that make sure that's centered set those over there make sure all the rest of mine are still centered they all look pretty good and we're off to the next color okay so I just got doing the mountain mountain honey scent and so now I've got to pick out the next one what am I want vanilla sandalwood cucumber melon huh. I picked out cucumber melon because I wanted that for my daughter in law so I have three cents left to go but I've now emptied my picture and I think I'm going to call it there for tonight